Well, it's an interesting thing I think I've seen is everyone's understanding of the future is coming together around a common set of ideas. The idea that it's all about increasing productivity for huma humanity, which means saving time ultimately. You want to save time on the uh, mundane tasks, uh, freeing you up more time to do creative new tasks, and that's how we'll create new wealth, new value, uh, n new aesthetics, and even new satisfaction at a human level. So that's a very interesting uh, common theme that we came to. Uh, and around that, of course, uh, there was a lot about what, where should we be investing for the future. And I think the importance of networks in that paradigm, the importance of analytic security, the dynamics of being able to track uh, 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 people and objects in, in the IoT era and, and optimize around that. All, everyone agreed those were the big themes, I think. And, and so there was a lot of commonality in that. There's also a belief that there's a better future in the telecom space than there has been in the recent past because of this new value creation around moving cloud to the edge, reducing latency, increasing bandwidth, and automating systems and platforms that were previously you know, not automated, so highly inefficient, and you could take some part of that value into our industry. So in running Bell Labs, uh, the way we look at the future is we, we like to think about human need. What is it that humans need to be able to do with they're interacting with systems or machines or platforms or each other in new ways? And we, we look five to ten years out. So let's think of that as crystal ball gazing, but we try and base it in physics or engineering or mathematics that says we've reached a limit, speed of light being one of the current limits that, uh, that uh, forces us to think about moving networks closer to the end user. So, so that's one thing we do, but then we need to back that understanding up with, so think of that as future thinking. We need to back it up with data from today to say the trend is already appearing, because if you get there too early in inventing the future, of course it's, it's an opportunity cost or stranded capital investment or wasted because the technology is now aging and redundant and a new version has come along in the meantime. So you always want to do the innovation at roughly the the right timing for the market. Hard to predict, but data helps. So at in, in the Nokia level, we, we of course use quite a bit of data to actually analyze market trends. We do market share data. We do in, in, look at investments in other sectors and the growth of those sectors, whether it's verticals of oil and gas or transportation or public, public sector, et cetera. So we're always looking at data from various sources to see if we can see the beginning of these trends and that these are now profitable markets. That's where we look for data is the market. We might have been working on a technology for 10 years, but it's now the time to launch it as a product because the market's appearing. I think we use a lot of data in that. Of course, competitive intelligence is part of that to see where we stand relative to the competition. And Ovum can help uh, in all those areas. Yeah. I actually think uh, the culture in Ovum and the, the, the knowledge base and the number of analysts uh, uh, we find very valuable and actually uh, provide very uh, good insight into a number of complex areas, the amount of business intelligence data you're acquiring, I think, uh, is, is impressive. And, and I think Ovum uh, will be a significant part of you know, services we use in the future.